All right, today I'm gonna show you something that has never been done in dog training ever before. It's double attacks, two decoys, two dogs, I mean, it's extremely complex to have two dogs learn as a team to make sure that they hold both sides and not allow either attacker in the zone to come in and attack from any side. So, why is this so complicated and extremely difficult and that's why you never see it in the world? And that's because naturally, when you put two dogs on you, they're not really going to worry about both people, right? Most dogs team up as a pair and they'll pinpoint one of the people. If they move, they both will go attack that one person at leaving the owner vulnerable. <laughs> that is what dogs do generally, okay? Unless you get lucky without teaching that one of the dogs will hold off and stay with the other attacker and both one to this attacker, one to this attacker and be able to work as a team around the body. That is not going to happen well without real high level training. Okay, this is very complicated because one, we have to make one of the dogs understand 
So here, what we started off with was we needed to teach one of the dogs to switch from the left side, teaming up with the other dog, and switch over on command to the other side. A droite, au pied, a droite, au pied, a droite. Good. So, off the bat, giving the dog an objective to split off the partner and now cover the other side of the body to make sure that we have the left side covered and the right side covered now. Now, this still does not mean, right, there's way more to it than this. Much more complicated. You can't even imagine in training how hard this is, even with the most brilliant dogs like these two. The right side dog has to make sure that they stay with a certain decoy all the time. No matter where that decoy goes, they hold on to them. The left side dog has to hold on to that decoy the whole time. So, not split off and worry about the other dog's attacker, okay? It's very complicated. But we, were, we got it done and they do it beautifully and brilliantly. So we're making clear that they need to hold, right? And stay with that sighted attacker, okay? making sure, and no matter what, that there's no holes and no gaps, right? That there's no way that we could take advantage of one of those gaps or holes when the dogs are moving around trying to, you know, cover the areas. So, I mean, he's on the floor, they do it well, standing up, moving backwards. I mean, it's just, right, amazing. So, this is the first time, I believe, I've never seen this in the dog world. 25, 30 years I've been in this industry, and this is the first time ever that dogs have been taught to guard two decoys at the same time and doing it in synchronicity <laughs> with each other knowing which decoy is theirs and they are on that game I mean it is beautiful so one other thing you'll notice when they start off in aggression, you hear a lot of barking and talking. As we go around and we start to go after the owner and try to get in there, you'll start to hear the barking fade. And now they just concentrate. So, it's very difficult because this is high level for these dogs to be able to think like this this is complex thinking at its finest right it doesn't get any higher level than thinking than this and having to get in sync with each other so you'll see as we start going around they start calming down and not barking frantically anymore because they need to think about the task and worry about all the scenarios where the other dog is, where the decoys are, where they're moving, stay on the owner, don't come off the owner too far, many components. So we do not care about the duration of barking, the continuing of the barking after the exercise was started, right? We want barking from the start 
to initiate a threat. But once the chaos starts, the dogs will calm down. We don't care if they bark, don't bark. But they are on it and they must attack. So that is why you see them calm down and stop barking frantically in aggression. Because it's so much for them to think. All the scenarios to think out that they have to stay concentrated and barking and getting chaotic in aggressive state makes it harder for them to concentrate. So we're just fine with that because any attacker is not getting in. Whether they're barking or not barking, you are getting mauled if you try to come into that owner. Ready? Go! Oh. Oh. Okay, so again, we like them starting off barking as a threat to somebody, not even to try to come in. But if it's chaos is going to start and some, those people push it, we don't care that the dogs quiet down and don't bark anymore because we want them to stay focused and exactly together in harmony, working around which is way more important than staying barking okay so but you see every time even in that state we try to take a step in it's immediate hits not allowing us at all to get close into that owner just beautiful and again this has never been done before in the dog training world and this is the highest, most elite protection dog exercise that has ever been on this planet. You will see it nowhere else, okay? So two dogs, two decoys, and staying extremely elite, complicated, very complicated, okay? so. We had just gotten this done, so putting up for you to see and give info about it because most people would just see it probably as, yeah, it's two dogs guarding and, right, they're attacking. Like people have seen two dogs attack before, they wouldn't even give it a thought about, it's not like that. <laughs> You've never seen this before, right? This is as hard as it gets, most complex, most trainers wouldn't even try to do something like this because of how hard it is and how complex it is to do. So there wouldn't even be attempts to do this. So we got it done. It wasn't easy, but we got it done and it is fantastic. It's beautiful, right? And now we sell dogs, protection dogs all the time. And it's always a question from people, what if there's two attackers or more, right? That's always the question. So if you have one dog, right, you're out of luck. Because if you have two attackers, three attackers and one dog, the brave person who wants to try you is going to get mauled. <laughs> So they would have to pick out of each other which one wants to get really hurt and mauled. That takes bravery. Now, let's say the dog attacks and he gets that person. Yes, quickly I can call him off and now attack the second one. So if there was two, I might have to do something if I'm the one being attacked for the moment, try to stay away from that attack or hold them off you know, whatever it is, so I can call the dog off and then have him attack the second one. So having two to work as a unit to fend off more than one attacker is just what all our clients have always been asking for, right? It's just having that team that now you really have things covered. If there's a third decoy and these two dogs were going around, they're still, none of them are getting in, right? The dogs are going to make sure they hover and just cover angles, even if there's three decoys. But again, now you have two dogs. If it's three people, two people have to commit to being absolutely eaten alive and mauled. 
So this is an absolute complete deterrent, right? Especially when you have two. <laughs> because who's going to be the one that's going to try to get and penetrate that circle? You have to be the crazy one, right? So two people try to come in, they are absolutely going to get it. It's going to be a nightmare, a mauling. And again, I could call one off and then go after the third one. So we're working on that also in practice because our dogs do that. So we're also training that right now as an also a scenario. But that's how this game works. So yeah, I mean, absolutely beautiful. Again, never been done before. It's first time a pair of dogs have ever worked together as a unit, complete fluency on going around the body and cutting off the angles of both decoys and making sure they're always pinpointing their own decoy that you do not let them in anywhere they go. So it does not get better than that. Never done before, first time in history. So. And we have much more to come with these two. Much more technical, difficult stuff that also has never been done before in dog training. So, stay tuned and much more is coming. Till next time, I'm Richard Hines.